welcome. Yeah. This is a, a <coughs> kind of a demo. Hopefully it can be a Q&A. We haven't really prepared much, but we're all familiar with the tools uh, about CV tools, which is a Max for Live pack, which comes with um, Ableton Suite that allows you to control your modular from live or control live from your modular. Um, just how many people here own a modular or use one somewhere? Okay, and how many of these people also have Ableton Live? Okay, does anyone use Ableton without a modular? Yeah. <laughs> and why are you guys here? <laughs> okay. How many people um, own Ableton Live and have a dog? What? <laughs> 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 Are, is, are people here already using CV tools? <laughs> okay, just one person. Two. Two. All right. Well, we thought maybe we could get into advanced stuff. Maybe. Um, well, let's, let's take it. start at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. So, <laughs> uh, this is Ifta and Ola from Skinnerbox, and I'm Matt from Ableton. Um, what, what, is, what are CV tools, guys? <laughs> What are CV tools? The CV tools is an interface between this world and this world. So if you ever want to come to to do stuff that links both of that, I mean, this is digital that makes zeros and ones, and this is analog. This does not make these zeros and ones. And if you want to control a software with a analog hardware or vice versa, you have to use CV tools in order to do so. And that's what CV tools are. It's just, yeah. I mean, you said it already. It's just inter-control <coughs> tool for these two domains, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, because we had the luck to also create this pack, we also pushed it, pushed our agenda uh, into it. And as like modular synth users and Ableton Live users, and try to fix issues in both worlds, let's say, for us as users. So hopefully we'll get to that also. So I guess uh, we'll just start with the most basic use case, and that's like, uh, let's say I have a very basic modular synth that just has an oscillator, and I want to write a sequence in live to make a synth voice out of that. Um, we would add this, uh, this instrument here, just CV instrument. Blah loads right up and you can see that there are outputs here for gate and pitch and then there's an audio in so we'll, we'll just set it up here we'll hit calibrate and it gives us some basic instructions it says plug a oscillator like a sign into your audio input so our audio input is here I've got a sign right here hit next and then select the input that I have. So I'm using input one. Very good. Turn that down. And then let's select a pitch. So we have an output on two, and I'm going to put that into the CV. I'm going to take that and plug it into the CV of this oscillator here. Oh, wait, volt per octave there. And that's on output two. Next. Okay, it says turn it until this thing turns green. Great. Hit next. Start. And what this is doing is this is calibrating our oscillator so it'll always be in pitch. Whatever pitch we play on the keyboard is the right pitch we're going to get out, which is really useful because this stuff is using a lot of electricity flowing through different stuff and it gets kind of messed up sometimes, so it's not always perfect. What you can actually see here, this is the... It's a... Right, it's a yeah. It's a, the non-linear behavior of the oscillator, right? I mean, if you had a, dis a digital one, this line <coughs> should be completely flat. But this is not the case, as we all know and love analog gear. It does not behave as we <coughs> as we actually want. <laughs> so, and in, uh, <coughs> especially in the higher ends, you see that it uh, 
has some some issues, and these are let's say flattened. I mean, the the question there's a big uh, question here: Is this actually desired? Do we actually want this? And if you just want to make something which is noisy or you don't really care about pitch, then you don't would not need this. But if you want want to I don't know, you, you, you just let an arpeggio play or something over like four octaves, uh, and you want, you want everything to be in tune. <coughs> I mean, this sometimes is, is what people want. They want things to be in tune. <laughs> then they, <laughs> sometimes, you know? Then they have to somehow get around this, and this is not really easily to be achieved with analog gear as is, so this CV instrument does that for you. Yeah. The also, it opens up a uh, lot of interesting possibilities, like extremely accurate analog FM that you can do. Let's, uh, you can, uh, let's demonstrate. So yes. now I can, uh, I don't know if you can see the keyboard here, but you can octave. Oh. Right? So now it's, it's tracked, but what gets even better is we hit finish, yeah, and now that. monitor. And this envelope is now controlling the input, so now we don't even need, all I have is this oscillator. Right, we can plug in a much more interesting sound. And I turned it down so I could talk, but maybe that's a good idea. So there you go, one oscillator and uh, I should rewind a little bit. How are we doing this? <laughs> we are sending out control voltages, I hope everyone here knows what a control voltage, through a DC coupled audio interface. We happen to be using expert sleepers in this case, but Motu is also a really good choice. And what that means is usually in sound cards to keep your speakers from like wasting energy and using up their magnets and wearing out, they put a DC blocker in there, which means that when there's a constant signal, it'll just bring it down to, to nothing. And you take that thing out, that means you can send out a voltage of a constant rate, just like you can send from uh, an attenuverter or something like this. So these sound cards <coughs> allow us to send a signal out, which represents some value that we want to send to the modules. Yeah, like a constant 3.5 volts, like a, yeah. like, like, a, like a battery or something, yeah. you know? Usually it, this is not something that you can hear, but these sound cards can do this, or audio yeah. interfaces. So now we have our, we, we have our basic patch here. And let's add an analog filter because like that's why we're using the modular in live. So we have a we have another little envelope over here. Let's output it to three. Output three of the sound card. Output three of the sound card. That's this one. We'll plug this into the C V here. Uh, just a, a short intervention. Because we use C V. Uh, straight from the sound card and not MIDI to CV converter, we work with really, really high resolution, basically as high as your sound card can do. Uh, so there's no stepping, nothing, there's no very little jitter, and it's very fast, actually. Yeah. So now I've got, yeah, I got this wasp filter here. Let's, let's turn it down to who has to do so because the people in the back row only get. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You can hear us talking still. Cool. cool. So that's uh, that's that's another basic use case. You were talking about um, doing FM directly from live, right? Uh, actually, not. But yes, you can also do this. Um, just bef before we we do that, I, I think it's a good moment to mention. Uh, me personally, I have this love and hate relationship with Eurorack. Like, I really like the sound, but I hate the format in many ways because it's very small. And when I do this, I can actually use controllers to control things out of the box. And what's really, really nice about using controllers with CV tools is that you can create this kind of really cool macros. For example, you can assign one knob to control the decay time of the filter envelope and at the same time to control the curve they all ca they they all have like curve. They can go from exponential to to linear to logarithmic, and <coughs> just have it very plucky when it's short. You want to do that? So we, we have this. Uh, oh yeah, right, right here. Exactly. Would it work? Yeah. So uh, it doesn't input MIDI. I think you need to tell it to input MIDI, MIDI first. MIDI controller. 
Yeah. Now, one, one thing I'm just just for um, Remote, yeah. what what these guys are trying to do now is um, this this modular stuff. All is you have control over everything. But when it comes to playing an instrument, I'm an instrumentalist, you know, and I I don't want a control over every single thing. And sometimes I just want to macro stuff together because I want the filter to open at the same time. I want the wave shaper to do something just with one knob. I don't want to need six hands to do something. And to do this in on the uh, on the analog level is you would what would you need like a mixer and mix all these sources together and everything like this. And here you could just use the, um, Ableton's great um, MIDI control um, assignment. Exactly. You know, just just to just to build yourself a macro, you can you can make all the ranges that you want. It's very convenient. So that's 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 what's happening here. So I just did that. So in this case, uh, my envelope on higher and longer ranges is more or less linear and if I go short it goes exponential which is really nice because I actually like exponential envelopes but only for short sounds because they get percussive then yeah so it, it's just a very simple demonstration of like why it's cool and how you can use it mm -hmm. And about uh, yeah, what we were talking about before, uh, the fact that you can uh, you couldn't see it, I guess you couldn't read it on the screen, but it actually calibrated this oscillator for nine octave of pretty precise uh, tracking. So you can do really nice analog FM, uh, which you is otherwise really hard to do because it's really hard to get two oscillators calibrated. Analog FM. Um, fails to be quite useful, like in comparison to the digital one from the DX7. Uh, the DX7 has digital controlled oscillators which are completely on the same frequency and that's why they can make this crazy stuff there. And with analog stuff it's not really possible because they, yeah, they are not as exact and this gets in, in the right direction here. Okay, and a, a part of this you can also do it out of the box. You have a uh, you have this shaper section mm -hmm. which you probably want to explain. It's like this uh, multi-stage envelope thing, but it also have like a pitch tracking mode where it actually oscillates on the same frequency that you are <coughs> playing, and you can send it back to the oscillator, and you'll have pretty precise FM action yeah. going on, which is really nice. So we could use this as a. Uh, Let's start with this. Ah, yeah. Yeah, okay. we could just use it to yeah. modulate the. Um, the filter here a little bit. Um, yeah. That is going on four. If there's questions, yeah. just interrupt. Yeah, yeah let's make this a little bit faster. Yeah, so now we have built-in LFO that can reset every time we want on a node on, or it can not reset. We can do all kinds of weird things, like add a little bit of noise to it. Um, we can map the amplitude of the of this from somewhere else in live. There are other there are other tools that allow you to do modularity inside of live, so we can even do that. But the use case we had that we wanted to do was to use this to FM the oscillator, right? So we can just yep. plug it into the pitch. Yeah. So we're just mixing signals. It's still the same wire. Yeah. Oh, you want to use the C the linear FM yes. or the exponential FM? I'll use the linear <coughs> one. Okay, four. Let's, can we revert to sine? Yeah. Like how would you? It's a nice sine. Right? Yeah. <coughs> so four. Ah. Oh, you didn't plug it in on there? We go on Oh, on two. four. Sorry, oh, I already okay. unplugged it. Mm. I do see it, but you have another release. Uh, usually it works. <laughs> 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 Don't know why. Where are we going to? See the input? Okay. Yeah, let me put this on sideways. Because we're not going in there. Is this an FM input here? Oh, that's sorry. Yeah, that's what we should plug it in. Yeah, but it's not coming out from here. I'm not sure why. Four. It was coming out before until I switched it to two. It's not coming out. Is this, is this there is we this go. Now. Wait, wait. What? Now it's coming out. 
<laughs> okay, let's not waste time on this. It works. <laughs> try, try, five, try five. Trust us. Don't know why it's not coming out. Uh, never mind. Let's move on. Okay. Is this output here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we can try something else. Anyways. Um, but, uh, you know, you also get control from all kinds of other stuff that you wouldn't normally have, like uh, velocity, which you can map to anything, uh, mod wheel, key track. Let's pretend we don't even... If we didn't even have the filter, we could um, add a, a filter from live and map envelope two to it here. Let's go back into this. Yeah. So now you can just use this MS20 filter in live with some overdrive and resonance. example or I could map this to like a reverb send or something delay <coughs> echo yeah so I can I can we can do modular stuff from inside of this in into live which is pretty cool so basically this uh, this software becomes available as some sort of a module here. Yeah. Because it's, <coughs> you can just, can you just, yeah. You can just use this. This is the output of, of live, actually. And you can just use that. You know, you can just generate any kind of uh, voltages, control stuff here, and use this as a module, as is. And also the other way around, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll um, get to that also. Can we do that? <laughs> I, uh, any questions so far? Yes. The guy yeah. on the back with the glasses. Uh, one question. Uh, yeah. For example, I have uh, automation on the uh, software filter, yeah. which I want to transfer them later to the analog filter. Yes. How I do no that? No problem. Uh, there is a device called uh, Utility. Yeah. It's kind of a can Swiss Army knife. Or I have to copy in the open uh, let's uh, let's You can copy the automations and. Let's 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 try this. I mean, uh, modulation or automation doesn't matter automation, actually. Yeah. Automation. Okay, let's, 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 let's maybe, maybe let's Just try it. As, as anything else, like sure if you have your automation sound. somewhere, yeah. okay. let's, let's write automation into this. What can we control with it? Let's control the. This is the master <laughs> output. I'm drinking beer. <laughs> mm, this is the modulation index. Where is the wave shaping on this? I don't know this oscillator. Yeah. Ah, right. So let's control the wave shaping. These are the outputs, right? Those are the outputs, yeah. Make sure so four isn't already coming from that weird. Oh, yeah, right. Let me check this shaper. Just turn that off. OK, so as you can see, I basically control the wave shaping of uh, the, well, the verbos oscillator with you can uh, see this the utility and nothing going on here. Exactly. So it's like a, it's a nice. It, oh, can you switch yeah. back to the thing? So it's very, it's a very nice uh, device because it's actually a three, three-way mixer where you can mix more signals, uh, offset, <coughs> polar, uh, polarize, and everything. And you can, of course, just write automations and use this uh, in order to. I mean, if I already have like you just copy your automation and, and, and paste. No, yep. yeah, yeah, it's copy paste. No, no. Okay. And it also has a very nice, uh, okay, if you want me to go a little bit experimental, I think it's a nice thing to show, actually. It has a very nice mode. Um, let me just, is it an, I need an empty track. Just make one, yeah. yeah take this one. Uh, where it can actually also take uh, audio, like straight CV input. Mm -hmm. Like, let's take, for example, uh, an LFO. Another thing, there's we, we have LFOs and envelope followers and stuff we can show you yeah. later, but this is just one of the LFOs. So they can map to anything in live or send its, send its signal out 
via CV to the sound card. So this LFO actually does not co uh, generate control data, but it controls, uh, it generates audio, exactly. right? You can see this there, mm -hmm. right? So, so how slow it can go? The can LFO? Um, it can go like 0 0.0000 shorts, yeah. something. To nothing, to 40, 40 hertz. hertz. And then uh, everything above should just be done with oscillators. And, and the was, I mean, like, just like minus uh, the 60 same. hours, I don't know, it's like zero, zero, yeah. zero <laughs> point something. <laughs> so, slow. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is maybe just off. I think it's basically, yeah, yeah it's, it's sending a zero to the oscillator. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so very slow. You, you see what's going on, right? It just it's rises yeah. slowly. I think it, it can actually go even slower if you type in the value. It's yeah. not bound to like floating point. So what I wanted to show is that uh, you can see, let me offset this a bit, you can see that I have this input um, going on three, yeah. On three, it's very high, I'm gonna take it down a bit. So the audio, is, the audio is coming in here into channel three? And going into channel three of this, and what I can do now is start to put things on the middle, like, uh, I mean, let's first make this Yeah. Let's roll the note. Okay. So. <laughs> why does it stop playing? Ah, it doesn't have sustain. Okay. Well, oh, I'm, I'm holding it. It's 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. I have this thing going on, and now I can just go, for example, and take a beat repeat or something, and drop it on the middle. target for the um, modulation is not very suitable. No, I think it's also the... No, this wave shaping does not do that much. Do we have something else, like filter or something? Uh, yeah, we can yeah. do that. Okay, so just patch it into a filter. Take a redux or something. I can use it as a sample and hold, for example. So it's really bound to your imagination. You can use any VST plugin in the way to kind of mess up with the CV signal that you send, which is really cool. Um, something that I appreciate very much. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to show this. Um, we also have another instrument in here which isn't doing CV at all, by the way, uh, called Rotating Rhythm Generator, and it's <coughs> sending out MIDI. And uh, you can see it'll make really cool patterns, but the use case is if you wanted to control your modular drum rack, which we just don't have set up here, Maybe I can make a voice in a, in a second. Um, <coughs> you would put in uh, this little puppy right here <coughs> called CV Triggers. And whenever it receives a specific note, you can tell it to send out a trigger on a specific uh, CV channel. I had that set up, but maybe I'll get to that in a second, but I'll just demo what the rotating rhythm generator does. Sure. You have, uh, you have four tracks. So this is somewhat inspired by another modular maker's like clock the dividing <coughs> thing, um, the 4MS rotating. You know which one I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the and one with the LEDs. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the rotating clock divider. Yes. So we have we have four tracks, um, and each one can send a, a, a note to a specific. When it triggers, it'll send out a specific note with a specific velocity and a trigger of a certain length. And you can say, send it out. Uh, let's just listen to this first one. All right, uh, so great. <laughs> <laughs> or every 16th. All right, so this is the basic thing. Uh, I want a quarter note here. So I've already set this thing up so that each thing is already kind of making a rhythm here. We got the snare on. 
right? It's revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> But then you can do other weird things like this. We have a Euclidean sequence generator. So basically you take a certain number of steps that you want total, and then how many of them you actually want to play, and then it just distributes it over that. I'm, by the way, I'm the inventor of uh, Euclid. <laughs> <laughs> and of general music. Yeah, and you can swing in both directions. Negative swing? Anyone ever heard negative swing before? I think you might have invented negative swing. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to claim them. <laughs> and there's logic stuff, so you can say, only trigger when this one also falls on the kick. You, you can cross compare different clocks and tell like, them to do logic. Don't do it on the kick. Where is it not? <laughs> It's a little complicated on the because you have Euclid mode on as well. Yeah. I think if you turn it off, it's more obvious. No, it wouldn't be there. Here, it's dropping out when the kick comes in. Yeah. So. Let's rotate. Oh, let's rotate. So why is it called the rotating rhythm generator? Because... You can rotate the outputs. So the patterns are getting, they're just shifting which note they're sending to. So the, yeah. the hi-hats, which are going every 16th, we're going to send to the kick, or the snare in that case, the kick. Yeah. So that's, that's included in the CV? Yeah, that's included yeah. in the CV tools. And you can just use it with drum rack, although it's meant to be used with this trigger device. Uh, I think I have trigger device. Uh, where is this? Uh, the trigger device. Yeah, let's turn on the trigger. Find which note I set it up to. Here, this one. So now this is sending out a trigger. Let's put it on five because we're not using that one yet. And hmm, do we have an envelope? Yes, we have an envelope here. So we're just going to make a very, very simple, just to demo that it works, a very simple voice here. I'm just <coughs> plugging uh, output 5 to trigger an envelope here, a very basic envelope. Mm. Let's do this one, sorry. And I will just feed some audio out of this oscillator. into this VCA and that's not long enough. Then this envelope to the CV in and the output of the VCA into two. So now I need to set up a channel that's listening to two here. By the way, we are selling comms for um, <laughs> just getting the cables flat and stuff, you know, just not get lost. Two in. And now, theoretically, wedge. For comm filter. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty quiet. <laughs> uh, let's get some more volume. More volume? Yeah, sure. I'm the human VCA. So this is, this is, now I'm triggering this. So uh, let's just replace that bongo. Yeah, I wish this VCA went a little louder, but you can hear this. That's here. So that's the use case for controlling drums from a drum rack in live. Yeah. Um, what are the other instruments in here? I would uh, show the input devices. Yes. Oh, you want to show the sh maybe show the modulation devices first, and we show the input devices. That's all the instruments. Uh, the mo the input devices. Uh, you can show the modulation first because it's okay, like, and then I'll, I'll do an extensive. Okay. So we already showed yeah. you that there's an LFO. 
Um, this has like sign, saw up, saw down, uh, triangle, square, random, bin, which can be tempo synced or free running. It has a, let's put it on something you can see a little bit better. As a depth, so you can like turn it all down, turn it all up, move it up or down. You can add jitterness to it. Maybe turn it's getting it all yeah. noisy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we have a shaper, so that thing that I showed you inside the instrument with its own little envelopes, we have one here. And the output you can see is over here. And this can be not only mapped inside of live, but you could map this, say, to the rate of the other LFO. So now you have like one LFO controlling another LFO, which could be sending it out to the filter or the oscillator or whatever. And if you don't like this shape, you just make your own. And an envelope follower. So what can we take? We'll take the output of the drums and feed this to the filter, which let is let coming in. Let me take in. the jitter down to, to, to get it more obvious what's going on here. Well, we're not well, using that one. This one is coming out um, for, yeah, let's just take out this envelope, plug it into six. Output on external output six. Uh, okay, so you see this little envelope uh, over here? We're sending that out on six. So if I mute this track, and, uh, sorry, play this instrument, you should be hearing five, six, did I do the wrong one? Yeah, I hear it very something. I think you need to give more gain, maybe. Where is it? Uh, gain. Yeah. Try it now. I think I unpatched this thing. Audio in. Yeah. Why don't I hear any messages like this one? Oh, you're not sending it anywhere, wait. Oh, I Where chose the go? wrong one, the, the trigger signal, sorry, yeah. Where should you go? Six, and turn off that one. Um. Yeah. So this is coming from the drums here. It's the envelope of the drums, right? Yeah. Um, you can also use uh, a threshold to trigger drums, so every time some input goes over something, it can trigger trigger a drum or reset a, an envelope or reset an LFO, reset a sequence. We have clock in and clock out. We have CV in. Okay. Should we show CV in? CV in is yes, cool. yes. It's uh, my favorite part. Okay. Should I rip all this out and yes. we just destroy yeah, everything? Yeah. Yeah, can I delete this channel or something? Yeah, just, you can just do a new live set if you want. No, let's not do that. Let's okay. do this. So I won't get confused. Uh, okay, it takes a little bit of preparation so you can talk in the meanwhile. About your yes, samples there's here? One, there's one, sample. one, uh, one <laughs> thing you that, you, sh here that, that you should not get used to, mm. which is don't My get used mm -hmm. to the undo function of live and then go back to, to your modular yeah, where you just messed up. Uh, there is no, no undo there. Something more know, like sometimes uh, you want to press undo and then you realize like there's like only something cables. Something more like texturized. It doesn't work. Texture. So the two wheels yeah. don't you have like vocals? really yeah, but work not together on this one. It doesn't matter. Can I? Okay. Yeah. Oh, we have a beautiful vocal from India. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Box CV in. We want and we want to take. These are the inputs, right? Mm, where is the output of this thing? Uh, 
A or B? So A uh, out B, for example. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to input two. I don't want to hear it, actually. Uh, yes. I'll just turn this. Okay, and this should be giving signal in. Low, too low. Ah, because it's not on DC mode. Okay, so what I did now is I actually um, <coughs> I'm sending the envelope out of rampage into live, and I can use it to control things in live. So this is the output of the oscillator here. Yeah. So yeah. if I uh, if I change this rise time, you'll see this this gets faster. Yeah. So exactly, we can change the range here. Oh, let's keep it on because this is ten vol. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what's the output of rampage. I don't know this module. Can calibrate. But, but you can also ah, it's too complicated now. I think you can also say how much range you want. And now I can take this actually and do things with it. Like for example, um, let's just have a sustained note. Playing this. Pretty long sample, you might yeah. Really yeah. 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 I just use it to control the position of the sample in live, which is my favorite example, actually, because uh, you pay a lot of money for granular samples, basically, <laughs> or any digital model, really, in the UAC world. And computers usually do it better there, in terms of sound and everything. And it's very hand-on, like, I don't, if I would have an offset, the, we don't have a system here, but if I would have, like, an offset or an attenuation module, is there any kind of attenuation here? Uh, there's, no, but there's a balance if you put it into... <laughs> exactly. So if I change the curve here, it's going to change as well. It's just really nice. Like it's a it's a really nice way to come up with things that you wouldn't otherwise just using this as a modulation source for life. Actually, this way around. And if you don't have, um, it actually works with any sound card. Uh, it has a pitch mode where you use an oscillator as uh, the tracking device, and you modulate the oscillator. And send it. It will work with any sound card. Yeah, you don't, have you don't need any up. special sound card. The trigger stuff also works without a sound card. I should yes. say. Yes. Because yeah. you just punch it, so it doesn't. It goes past the DC blocker before yeah, it can it's put it's it down. Fast, actually. Yeah. So, any questions, by the way, about this? Please. No? I sense. I sense there is a question. Yes. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Another question. Uh, you have this uh, wonderful shaper. And if I would perform live, so in like in pattern mode, is there a way to make kind of presets? Yes, you yeah. everything saves. The calibration saves. Everything saves with the set. You can save presets. Yeah, I mean, for the shape. Different uh, sense in Ableton to have a different shapers, different shapes. Yeah, you can yeah, you yeah, can yeah. you can save the preset with the shape. Oh. I think even I think you get one Sha user the shaper device. I mean. Yeah, I think you even get one yeah. one usable envelope, whatever. Yeah, so if I just let's just this is my stupid shape, and I just save it as. A I mean, uh, in order that it will be linked to the same number in Ableton project. Uh, uh, not in the preset, but in the in live set. set. So when you yeah. save your live set, everything will be remembered. I mean, for every different track. I play Naples and I want to have different shapers. Yeah, no, no problem. I mean, we just could add so one over there. And okay. Yeah, you can you can even cross-modulate. I can map this one over to the other 
What other track was that on? There. Another and cross modulating. I put on the master like stand free, and I want to have a different shape. How I do that? The master doesn't have sends, yeah. but what do you mean? One, two, three, four, so on the left side, master, yeah. the lounge is sends. You would just want to add another send track. Yeah. No, 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 just, I have a track, yeah. which is like nicely ordered to send one. Then I have okay. another track to send We two. have this one to send one, and this one to send two. And we just want to sin, map this sin, one. Sin, not send, sin. Like sin. If I play live, I like can... Scene, you okay, the scene. Um, from these that. shapes, you could have yeah. each scene could have one, but I, the, the breakpoints aren't uh, parameters, so that wouldn't be in the scene. But what you could do is just make copies of these it's with different heavy. ones. Yeah, so that's... that's also with two utilities, I have, like, my... Uh, you my can turn them off. Right. Yeah, you know. can turn them yeah, off and on. Right. A way. A lot of them At the moment, that's not a feature. Okay, that's not very nice to have. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and another small question is any way to record the CVs back to Ableton? If you use this, it's very simple. You just record audio. Audio. Sound, audio. <coughs> like a sound file. Yeah, let's yeah. take this. Uh, so we, we have this. Uh, well, this is going it's super slow now. It's coming in two. It's coming into audio input from external in to hit record. Just record. You can show okay, it here. Cool, yeah. Basically logic, yeah. Thank you. And then what you would do is take the utility and put it after that and send it to whatever you want in your modular. And now you have clips. You have CV clips in live, okay, so you okay, can just launch okay those. Way to solve my first yeah. Question yeah. Before. So you can basically, if you have enough outputs on your sound card, you can make presets for your for all the settings of your patch uh, I, by I firing these clips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So ah yeah, we also have the clock input device, which is really cool. Clocking, I mean. Um, but it's it's a very Packs, yeah. Clock utilities, clock in. Let me delete this channel. Um, maybe also this one. Just to keep it over this bit. So uh, you can actually take clock from your modular system and use it to control live, sync live to your modular system, mm -hmm. which is really cool because, like, for me, a lot of times I'm Sitting, I have a patch going with a sequence. I have no idea where it is time-wise, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if I want to record it sync to somewhere, I need to do it the other way around, and it kind of kills the groove a lot of times. So yeah. we wanted to have the possibility to do it the other way around. So you can just basically take an oscillator or a clocking module, or whatever, and just tell live to. It's here. Um, so we have this sequencer right here. Let's try and make this a bit. Uh, for those watching at home, <laughs> we have this sequencer right here. Um, it's just, it's got its own clock, and it's playing this sequence as it likes. But we need the gate output of this. Um, and there is a clock out. Yeah. There's a clock in. Sorry, we can do clock in. We can clock this uh, to live. No, yeah, I'm showing the other way around, actually. The other way around. Okay. This, that's the one I have. Uh, but we can actually, it's perfect. We it's do perfect. a clock in from this and multi it out to live. Where's the gate out? Yeah. Just we need a multiplier. Yes, a very long one. So just take it to input two. And as you see, uh, live is detecting the tempo and basically setting it. So if you can you go faster there? Uh, I haven't used this one before, but I think can that's you, can, it. Can you play some drums along with this? Yeah, that's just, just uh, yeah, but then we need drums. to then we need to set the phase also. We can also control the start and stop of the transport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just one. Let's just make a new one here. Yeah, maybe a track. Drums. This one, I don't know what it is. Just put it down. Uh, I, 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 it's, it's 
So but that's we need to wait. We need to phase the transport. Otherwise, it's going to be somewhere. You need to no, send no. the gate to the transport. But it, but it gets the idea. You can yeah. also reset the phase and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you can control the tempo from here, which is really cool. And it also has like a high resolution mode uh, where you can actually use oscillators to control the tempo and do really, really weird stuff with warped samples. Mm -hmm. If you want to show this, I don't know. Uh, what? <laughs> I just got <laughs> analog. Do you have any drum loops here? Yeah. I do. Um, my samples called uh, something like um, something called drums up here. Drum loops. Drum loops. Yes, perfect. Just put it on an audio track. Okay. Uh, can you take down the sequencer for a second? Maybe I I, I can. Yep. Go for it. The clock is on the same track. Okay, so if we take like a high resolution clock <coughs> and connect it to an oscillator. It will be very responsive actually to clocks. And you can do weird things. Like this, kind of modulate the clock and play with really, really good sounding warp samples, which I really like also. Yeah, <laughs> it was my contribution. <laughs> beautiful. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Wonderful. I want to hear a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> um, any more questions? So we also have clock out, which I guess you can imagine. It does the same thing. It just sends out a pulse. We could... Um, I already destroyed just, this just patch. Let's, just let's. I they can imagine yeah. what it does. Yeah. <laughs> right? It clocks. Their brains. They, it clocks. They but this is pretty cool. It has yeah. all kinds of different settings. It has like PPQN for those that care. It has 16th notes, 8th notes, whatever. <coughs> I think it's 8th notes. If you hook up your Volca or your pocket operator, yeah, it yeah. also will sync those. There. Bloop, bloop. What else is left? Utility? That's uh, that's. Ah, we showed it already. Yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Uh, the the clock can also send gate and stuff if you use this Pamela thing. Yeah. Could you like with using the clock in? Could you be able to record the tempo automation? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. What do you mean? <laughs> using the clock as? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you cannot because it's um it's it's on the API level. It's not automation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think you you can. What I do is I record audio. Basically. No, I think yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking of doing a weird thing and then recording the yes. tempo. I mean, you can do it differently. You can like use it to control the tempo. Yeah, there it is. With the uh, utility. So device. if you look here on the master track, here's the tempo. Let's make this big. Oh, oh, it does work. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You can do it. There's the weird tempo thing. Yeah. What's that? Oh, other Max for Live tools. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So but it works, yes. Yeah. But oh. this is just kind of like a stepping stone. There's these, these are all made in Max for Live, so you can go in and, since you're into modular, take a look at Max. You can start taking things apart and adding things to it. Um, Max also plays with other fully functional Max things modularly. So if you're afraid to open things up and make your own <laughs> stuff, you can also just route things back and forth to each other. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess one of our hopes was that we would put this out there and people would be like, oh, I want a Maths, or I want a weird random sequenced slew sloth thing. And they would go in and see how we made it and then start making their owns and put them out on maxforlive.com. And, and kill the, the whole world. industry. <laughs> just wanted to say that. It's, it's, it's Sell it's, tons it's of it's these a bit, things. It's a bit <laughs> ironic that we make this workshop in a, in a shop. That you don't need anything. You, don't, you need to stop. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, it's not true. You need a lot of things. So when you play polyphonic? No, not yet. But it's, uh, it's on the scope. Like. Yeah. 
No, it's uh, of course it's not. I mean, some people really like to work with hardware, and it's like their thing. You should you should have a device uh, and a, a like like um, batteries down. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> oscillator <laughs> to battery, just DC, yeah. CB uh, to battery. I think anyway, six six percent is fine. Mm. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I mean, of course, like if you're only into hardware, then there's no point. But if you use computer, then I personally believe I'm biased because I made this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that there is no better alternative. <laughs> yeah. the, but the, we should mention there are other alternatives. Uh, but they all suck. Like <laughs> <laughs> they all really shit. <laughs> the other alternatives. But, uh, yeah. I guess that about wraps it up, but we'd be happy to take questions. Yes, I sense a question. Um, yes. Do you use like MBE? Like, uh, no, no. That's way too hippie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all um, just sending out one CV. So, I mean, if you wanted to record the... I was thinking because I have one of these like Roly mm -hmm. right? So, I was thinking if I could like use it so the pressure thing other dimension thing sends some control to through the ESA to uh, yeah yeah this is possible I mean yeah. if this is MIDI controls you can send yeah. any kind yeah. of MIDI control some things just don't work with like you would yeah, but if, if it's just a MIDI control number yeah. you know that sends us values of course like make 16 tracks each with a CV instrument on it and then each one of your fingers will be sending to one of the CV instruments and then you have to have 16 Oscillators and 16 filters and 16 envelopes and Given 16 VCAs. Given the fact VCAs. that you have 16 fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, just with 16 <laughs> envelopes, you could, I mean, just 16 yeah. oscillators, because you could use the CV instrument for the envelopes as well. Yeah. No. So it works. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, we never tried it. <laughs> when I get 16 oscillators. Yeah. Suggestions? Any suggestions? What we could do. Don't, don't suggest. <laughs> <laughs> no, just for the record. Right. What was your favorite part of making it? My favorite part of making it was uh, the moment when I realized that it was over. <laughs> you know, I just finished. I mean, my, my favorite part of it was actually just digging into um, pitch detection stuff. I, I made the calibration uh, um, engine and I was just reading. PDFs out of the internet about uh, like how to detect pitches in a sophisticated ways and implement this into Max and try and fail and again and repeat until this happened, right? Yeah. So that was my favorite part. What was your favorite part? Wow, so many. Uh, I don't know out of my head. I think probably building the input tools because it was like the m most exciting aspect for me is like the other way around using modules to control the digital world. Yes. I think. My favorite part was working with you guys. Ah. <laughs> when you prepare this. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say this also. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving.